Uh, Paleo Joe here. Uh, told you I'd be doing a little program on uh, on crinoids, so today's the day. Uh, just got back yesterday from uh, Arcona, Ontario. Did some really nice uh, fossil digging there. Found lots of really cool stuff. I uh, found a really great green ops. Uh, we'll talk about that in some other uh, episode. I'm surrounded by fossils here in the office. So basically, um, crinoids are echinoderms. Um, they're commonly called uh, sea lilies or lilies of the sea, but they're not uh, plants. They're actually animals. They are echinoderms related to starfish, brittle stars, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, things like that. Uh, they are actually a creature that lives in the ocean. Now, the crinoid is made up of a lot of different parts. It's made of a part called a holdfast. The holdfast is actually kind of like a root system, but I don't like to say roots because roots connotate plants. This is actually an animal, so it's got a holdfast, a way to attach itself to the to the bottom of the ocean, to rocks and to, to other things. Um, it's also got stems. The stems are made up of a lot of discs. Those little round discs, they kind of look like poker chips, uh, stacked one on top of another on top of another. Uh, those discs make up a column. At the top of the column, there's something we call a calyx. Uh, some people call it a boral cup. And um, that's a, well, let me let me show you one. Here's, here's a calyx right here of a uh, common uh, crinoid we have here in the state of Michigan. This is just the calyx. There's no arms, no stem. But the calyx uh, means ball, and it's kind of the ball at the top of the stem. And then on top of that, we've got feather-like fingers or arms. Um, and at the end of those arms, we have something called pinules. And those pinules would actually filter the water, grab the food particles from the water, and feed them down into the into the mouth where this uh, creature will then take in nourishment. So uh, crinoids are actually animals. Now, uh, like I said, the root fast is a, a root fast. The hold fast is actually uh, a system that kind of holds it. The, it's a structure that holds it to the bottom of the ocean. Um, here's another uh, crinoid calyx that I've got. Um, this is just a little tiny baby, but if you look right there, it's got a really cool star pattern. But anyway, uh, these are some of the crinoids that we find here uh, in the state of Michigan. Now they're held uh, up by the stem, and the stem uh, is made up of a lot of these round discs. Um, this one happens to come from uh, Indiana. You can find these things in Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Indiana, Ohio. I mean, any place where we had crinoids, you find lots of these discs. What happens is the creature, when it's on the bottom of the ocean, is nice and strong and stable. But eventually it dies or it's destroyed by a storm, and these discs and all the pieces of the crinoid kind of fall apart into thousands and thousands of pieces. That's what's more commonly found by, by people, is all these round discs and columns and stems. Very rare to ever find the, the calyx or the cup. Um, I was very fortunate a couple years ago. Uh, I was digging in uh, Alpena, Michigan. There was a quarry there. And the quarry operator let me in there one time, a uh, half hour. And what we had discovered was a lens. Um, let me try to explain this. So people ask me to, to keep these videos a little bit longer. I don't want to do that too much. But what had happened, what seemed to have happened, was there was a depression in the ocean near the beach. Just a small depression in the sand, out in the water, in the lagoon. And a storm came by and did its thing. And a bunch of these crinoids were killed. They, they died and fell apart on the bottom of the ocean. Well, because these things are nice round balls, they were picked up by the current, and they were deposited in that shallow depression, in that lens. They were covered up by sand and mud and, and dirt and all kinds of stuff and clay. And basically it all turned to clay, and it never changed over the last 360 million years. They were blasting the side of the wall uh, to get to the limestone, which is what they were quarrying. And as they blasted the wall away, it exposed this beautiful lens of, of clay. And literally these crinoid calyx were just falling out of the side of the cliff. They were all over the ground. I picked up 167 crinoid calyxes in the half an hour. That lens is now gone. They kept blasting further and further back uh, in the quarry, and eventually that, that lens is gone. That little depression in the ocean back then is gone. So um, that was a very lucky happenstance. I happened to be there uh, just before they blasted the rest of it, and I, I was very lucky to get that. Let me show you a couple little crinoids here. Again, this is just a small example of a crinoid. There's there's a stem right there. The calyx is up at the top, and there's the arms. Uh, you can actually see the pinules. We actually call this top part uh, the calyx and the arms. We call that a crown. Uh, and this one has the uh, the calyx and the crown and a small stem right there. Here's another one, just a different kind of variant. Um, uh, this one's a cyanthocrinus. Uh, this one comes from Indiana. This other one also came from Indiana. Uh, this one's a batocrinus. 
but anyway, you can, again, you can see the, the part of the stem here. There's the calyx or the cup, and there are the arms uh, with the pinules. Uh, the pinules are very small. You can hardly see those. And just yesterday, I got a, a crinoid out of, uh, out of prep, and this one is a little bit... A little bit nicer. This is a Silurian cry crinoid. Um, it's spectacular. It's got a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of uh, a pyrite on it as well. But here's a, another example that just came out of uh, out of uh, prep the other day. So basically, uh, these guys who were around from uh, basically the Ordovician period, and they're even in the oceans, deep oceans today. Um, back then, they were in shallow tropical seas. Uh, today, they're mostly located in the very deep oceans. And one really cool thing, if you want to check this out, if you go to your computer and Google walking crinoid, you'll see a crinoid at the deep bottom of the ocean just kind of using its feathered fingers to walk across the bottom of the ocean. There are crinoids that are attached by a structure to the bottom of the ocean, and then there are free-floating crinoids that kind of float in the water column. They Excuse me, they don't have a stem, they're just kind of floating around. So um, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible uh, for beginning uh, fossil collectors to give you kind of an idea what's available out there, what kind of things we do find. I uh, don't want to get into a lot of heavy stuff. If you really want more information, uh, Google crinoid. Google what it looks, like, what it is, what it looks like. Um, Wikipedia's got a lot of great stuff. I know a lot of people don't like Wikipedia. You know, people can put false information in there. But again, uh, do some research and try to find out what these uh, creatures are if you're really that interested this is just a beginning thing just to show you a little bit about what uh, what these uh, what these creatures are like um, and the finds today that we're finding fossils that really indicates shallow water that's where these things were found so a lot of the ancient tropical oceans where we find coral reefs uh, where we find lots of brachiopods and things like that you will have a chance to try to find some crinoids um, a lot of times people that come up come out on my trips uh, they pick up nothing but those little crinoid discs they want to make little necklaces and, and bracelets out of them Kind of neat. But anyway, that's uh, just a very short primer on what crinoids are. Um, lots and lots of different species. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to go into how many species there are. But that's kind of what crinoids are. Just a very simple tutorial on a creature called crinoid. People call them sea lilies, but they're not plants. They're actually animals related to modern day starfish. So y'all take care.